Hi, everybody. It's Agnes. We have another interview today, and it's with Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hello. <laughs> Lauren, just tell people where you are on the Google map. I am in Nashville, Tennessee, in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited to be talking. Uh, I'm excited, too, because we've had contact not long ago, and you filled me in on a lot of things, so I was excited for you to come and share your story. So in a, in a nutshell, what manifestations do you want to share today? Um, I have a lot of interesting kind of big and little things that have happened. Yeah. Um, it really is, is uh, my biggest manifestation that I'm still working on would be the specific person. But in the meantime, I have just realized that the law of attraction is working whether you know it is or not. <laughs> yeah. And I think so many people um, haven't realized that. And so for those of us who watch you and who learn, I mean, it's just such a great opportunity to be living in this time, like you say, and having access to all this information quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I just want to tell about all the fun stuff that's been happening. Yeah. Um, the pathway of this little specific person journey. Yes. Go for it. We'll start wherever you want on the, on the line, on the, you know, sure. the horizontal um, line. <laughs> um, I, I am new ish to Nashville and this is the second time that I've lived here. And so I moved here basically end of December of 15 and, um, by February of 2016, I had um, met my specific person and started talking. And um, long story short, I don't want to focus too much on um, what has happened before, but um, I think he's wonderful. I think he's amazing. And I think he's exactly what I needed in my life to help me realize, like, you know what? Um, you... I need to be responsible for myself. I need to be um, not so needy, not so dependent, not so um, thinking that another person is going to just complete this whole process. I think a lot of people think that. And, um, you know, I know I manifested him at that point, even though I didn't know that I did. But then the whole year of 2016 was just... I always describe it as it feels like a bunch of dominoes that kept falling and I kept sticking my finger in trying to stop the chain from falling, but it, it never did. And so at the beginning of 2017, I manifested our, our breakup. Um, so that ended up really, it was the, as soon as I hung up the phone, I, I broke up with him. Um, and I think that was all fear based coming from, you know, I, I knew things weren't working right, but I also felt that I didn't have the tools to help us have a great relationship. I was feeling inadequate, and really, I had no idea um, about the law of attraction at that point at all. And so, the minute I hung up the phone, I thought, wow, I just made the biggest mistake of my life. Um, but it was also at that point that I decided, you know what, you should look yourself in the mirror and take responsibility for the fact that you, Lauren, are the common denominator for 10 years or better of failed relationships. And so um, that's when I kind of started that journey. I didn't know what to do other than to turn to YouTube and Google and the wonderful internet to try to empower myself um, to get some things going. And um, it was around my birthday that I had first kind of heard about the law of attraction because of um, Veronica. Yeah. And I had told you before, I thought to myself, what in the world? <laughs> How is anybody going to get anything done just sitting around thinking about things? You know, I was the epitome of the action figure, as you call it. <laughs> And I thought, I'm not doing this. This doesn't make any kind of sense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do stuff to help myself feel better. So I ended up in one of those Get Your Ex Back programs, which I, I'm very grateful for that too. And another thing that I did for myself was um, try to find out the why. Uh, you know, I, I put myself into... Um, I went and saw a therapist and tried to figure out, you know... And there were various 
helpers along this journey. It wasn't just Veronica or you or, you know, the, um, the Get Your Ex Back program that I was using, um, books I was reading. But I wanted to really know, you know, what makes me me? Why has it looked like this up until this point? And what should I do um, to help myself going forward in the best possible way? So um, all of 2017 was spent finding out you know, family history and the way that I grew up and, you know, really that why, um, I think that helped me build a really good foundation for all of that. Aha, I get it. I, I know why things have been such a mess up until this point. Yeah. And now I know I don't have to tell myself those old stories anymore because I have the law of attraction. So, um, it was probably around, uh, November or December of 17 that I started listening to you and I thought okay this is all really making sense and then what it hinged on was self-love um, and that was the missing piece to all of that puzzle like the light bulb just came on and now I just tell people like I don't I don't know the rest of the story I know that it's written and I know that it's out there and I can just kind of like no he's not back yet no, you know, he's coming, but yes, it, the story is written and I just have to get to the point where I want to select what's happening. Like you said, you know, pick, pick which version you want off the shelf. But I, I'm just to this point where I really truly am enjoying the journey, um, learning how to just not be the action figure, um, working more on myself, my self love, my, um, you know, I want to get my life straight again because it was, you know, I, I had been recruited to move to Nashville for the company that I was working with. Um, I was very successful where I had lived before and moving here was kind of like that, that last little, you know, somebody got me in the chink in the armor in my soft underbelly and just everything fell apart. And that added to that story that I was already telling myself was not good enough, not good enough. So now it's like, wow, how different would life be right now? Had I known about self love and the law of attraction, but you know what? It doesn't even matter because I have this much more of my life to go. Yeah. And I'm so excited about whatever's coming next. And, um, that's kind of where we are on the timeline. So fabulous. fabulous. Mm -hmm. And you've had some amazing things happen in other areas around work, around, you know, yes. that you shared. Do you want to share a bit about that stuff? Cause that was really amazing too. Yeah, I would love to. Um, let's see. I mean, I have so many kind of little things, but also some big things too. Um, when I moved here to Nashville the second time, I guess backing up even further, right out of college, I was a school teacher and I ended up in Nashville for my first year. I call it the freshman year of life. When I graduated from college, I ended up teaching school here in Nashville and I stayed for three years and I thought, I can't stand Tennessee. I will never be back. <laughs> And so life took me back to Iowa where I had gone to college um, for various reasons. One of that, I was married at the time and his family was from there. Um, and I ended up leaving the teaching world to become a server and a bartender because I had this, you know, this inner feeling of like, I should be making more money if I'm raising other people's kids with them and for them. Um, and so I knew I could just work part time and make the same amount of money um, being a server and a bartender. And so I did that for a while. And um, I knew that wasn't fulfilling after a few years of doing that. Like I love helping people and serving people and it's great to make cash every day. But um, I, I, um, I ended up in the insurance world because of this really wonderful opportunity with an insurance company called Aflac. And that's where I built my, first small empire and um, helped a lot of people. I was, I was in leadership and development. It wasn't just about being an insurance agent. It was about teaching other people to run their own business. And um, there's a lot of really great 
um, things that came from that opportunity. But long story short, Affleck brought me back to Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> when you say things like never, funny stuff happens. Um, so he, here I was, but then the opportunity here wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was just too much of a, the difference in the market and all of that stuff. I just knew like, I'm not where I want to be anymore. I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm angry. I'm sad, you know, and that just kept, it was all weighing on me throughout that first year that I was here 2016. It was, it was just that feeling like not good enough, not good enough. And I kept hearing that from other people and I just decided, you know what, let me just pull the plug. I'm going to take care of myself. Um, I got my life back together with, you know, I bought a house. I helped stabilize life that way. And then I decided to go into um, the real estate world. And so I'm now with Keller Williams. And funny thing about that was, again, Keller Williams just kind of chose me. You know, a friend of mine who was with Aflac back in Iowa had joined Keller Williams there. She was telling me how wonderful the company was. Um, Eric who is my, my friend here who ended up selling me my house. And he mentioned, you know, you would be really great at this. You should do this. Well, it turns out that when I did join up, um, I learned after the fact that one of the um, uh, influential people in the company who is in charge of the training um, component of the company she knows all about uh, basically law of attraction, quantum physics. I mean, the entire company is built on this abundance mindset and um, the little quotes that they have, you know, hanging around like your cells eavesdrop on your thoughts and want equals lack and, you know, just all of this stuff that already matches up with everything I've been learning. And I'm just kind of looking around like, what kind of voodoo is this? I like it. <laughs> so um, things have been really good with real estate. There's the dog. Um, things have been great. And I, I became active in February. And since then, I have seven families that I've helped with their new homes. Either they're already sold or they're under contract waiting to be. Wow. Yep. So that's really exciting. Um, and the one story in particular, one of the things I do to meet new clients is to run open houses on behalf of other agents. You know, some agents are busy. They don't want to be at open houses. So I'll go for two hours on a Saturday or Sunday and host the open house and meet new people that way. Yeah. Um, and that's good for those potential clients then because then they're not having one agent working both sides of the deal. Yes. So there was one Sunday or Saturday, it was a Saturday. And I remember thinking like, I wonder where my next client is going to come from. I don't really have anything cooking right now. You know, my hands are like, everything's done. Everyone's taken care of that I'm already um, working on. So who's next? Who will I get to help next? And I was, maybe a little bit panicking about, you know, the paycheck, but I thought, don't even focus on that because I've already been using my affirmations and the self-love to tell myself money's coming in faster than I can spend it. Um, you know, I'm manifesting large amounts of money. Um, I love money and money loves me. Actually, in the class that I took from Keller Williams, they had us do this exercise where we all of our teams, we were set up in little pods, um, eight, 10 people to a table, and we were all asked to bring in 20 $1 bills. And we took turns lying on the floor, and each team member, we would lay on the floor and go, I'm a money magnet, I'm a money magnet. And they would throw money on us, and you could just feel this, you know, to get us comfortable with, you know what? Yeah, yeah, the company is teaching us this, it's great. Amazing. Yeah. So in my moment of temporary panic, I just thought, you know what? You've got this. Today you're hosting a beautiful open house. It's, it's a fabulous, it's not like any other home. People are going to come to this. Um, you're going to have a great time. You know, it's, it's, it's really just, I'm using my bartender skills because I serve mimosas to people, muffins and mimosas at the open house. You know, and I'm just happy to meet people. And I thought, 
you know what? You are going to meet your next buyer there. They're going to want to put an offer in on this house. And it wasn't a little house, it was a big house, and it was very, it was a nice one. Um, big price tag. Um, and, and everything's going to be great. And because I just thought that thought and believed it and just stopped obsessing about it, I just let it go. Um, I went to the open house. I had that mindset. I was radiating that type of energy. And sure enough, here she comes, my next buyer. And we wrote a contract on the house the next day. And she's closing on Monday, a week from today, on that house. And I was able to meet a couple other buyers there as well um, who might potentially have a home to sell. And with that original buyer who's buying that house, she also had a condo to sell. And so um, I get to be a part of that financially too. My business partner Eric takes care of that side of it. But I was able to help her through the buying process and help her into her new home. Um, he is helping her out of her condo. We're getting paid for both of those uh, transactions. So it's really just, I mean, it's, and to me, that was the proof of like, it's as simple as that. Like the story's already written, just calm down, stop worrying about the how it's gonna happen and yeah. just do it. Well, it's mm -hmm. like a, you, live, you live from the end result. You put it into practice. Yeah, yeah, and it's easy. because yeah. if I would have gone to that open house and had the mindset of like, oh no, what's happening? I'm worried. I'm scared. I'm, you know, all of those yucky vibrational things. Like that wouldn't have helped her be attracted to me or those other people be attracted to me. It would have just kept me in that lower vibration. Like I'm just really learning that the stories that we tell ourselves are what ends up happening. So. You know what I loved about what you said? You set the intention, I'm going to go to this open house. It's a beautiful home. So you had appreciation for the house. It was unique. It was expensive. And you said, who am I going to help today? And I love how you said that because it's like, you're already going, how can I give rather than how can I get my pay? You're not even right. looking at your whole intention when you get there is about service. Right. And that I think is such a key component in all of this is whether it's a relationship or a house. Give it's love. It's give, 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 give. It's the same thing every time. Stop trying to get, stop trying to get, stop trying to get, stop trying to get. And there's a perfect example. Um, and you get, you get um, uh, in the industry, in your position and, and in your industry, do people get paid a base wage and commission or is it just all commission? Only commission. Yeah, which means your neck is on the chopping block every, week, every month if you don't line up your energy, which really is such a great thing because it forces you to do it. I'm not scared anymore because they're really... I mean, I've lived in a world where there is no huge financial safety net. When I was in insurance, it was the same. Yeah. Although there was a little bit, once it started building up, there was a little bit to depend on. Yeah. Um, and there's ways that we can all set that up. But for now, it's like, yes, this is a brand new thing for me. I've started a new business, essentially. Um, and yeah, it, it forces you to practice it every single day. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of folks just joke. What's that? You really enjoy it though, don't you? I do. I do. I like the challenge. I like not staying stagnant. And that's just really, um, that's, that's, a, it's, it's so vital because I realize now, and I, again, I think that's the reason it's taking so long with the specific person. Like I need to practice how to stay in the high vibration or if I falter to get right back up quickly because so many people get so comfortable. You know, I've heard it from some of your other success stories. Like they'll get somebody back and then they'll just get kind of lazy and not do it. And all of a sudden yeah. the same problems resurface. Definitely. And, and you're yeah. only really as good as today. Like you could have a great day today. If you don't put it into practice tomorrow, you slide back down. It's like snakes and ladders. You have to stay mentally on top of yourself. It's a mental fitness. Yes. Yes. 
and now that I'm aware of it, I mean, I can look back on my own personal timeline and think like, wow, the law of attraction really has been working for me this entire time. I didn't realize it, but now that I realize it, how much more exciting is life going to be to say, yep, I manifested that, and then this good thing over here came from this thought, and this came from this, so it's just been, it's been really like, I feel like I'm living in a fishbowl, or like time kind of stops sometimes, like, wow, it's happening, so, uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's so personally satisfying, isn't it? Yes, um, yes. Just really... Uh, in the big things and the small things. That was a big thing, for yep. sure. Yep. Um, one of the small things, I feel like I should share the cardinal story. Yes. So a friend that I met online through the, um, the Get Your Ex Back program, we've kept in touch, and um, she and I decided, like, hey, let's just not focus on the specific person so much. Like, let's just start practicing the law of attraction in all things. And so... We did this little game. I think we had heard about it from an Abraham video or something like that. And we will write down what we want to manifest on a sticky note and put the date yeah. and then wait for it to happen. And so she wrote her thing and I wrote mine. And I can't remember what she picked at that round, but she picked something and it showed up right away. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I had picked a cardinal. I love cardinals. I think they're beautiful. I'm from St. Louis originally, and the baseball team is the Cardinals. And so they've, they've just kind of always been something special. But um, I, it was maybe three or four days, and I still hadn't seen one. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to manifest it myself. And I start flipping through the Facebook feed because surely some childhood friend went to a baseball game, and then they've got their hat on, and I'll see a Cardinal in the news feed on Facebook. Yeah. And Lo well, and behold, I'm like flipping for a good 20 minutes and I don't see anything. I'm like, never mind. I'll just, I'll, it'll just come. And I'm telling you the next day, I take, I take the same route to work every day. Typically there's nothing special that I did that day. I was just living life and I had let it go. And all of a sudden here's a Cardinal flying out of nowhere. And then maybe 10 minutes later, another one, I saw five, or more throughout the day and I just thought wow like that's the lesson right there when you try to force it it's yeah. just gonna be as cool but when you let it flow like you get more than you're expecting yeah, you got it times five that day when you just let go isn't that just such a great just another great reminder that if I don't go looking for it I get way more than what I expect yes yeah. yes yeah so I just feel lately uh, I've been telling myself that I'm just a magnet for all good things. And um, I really, really see that happening lately. Um, a lot of people who have left my life for one reason or another, or we just don't see each other that often. Yeah. You know, it's, it's those types of people where you know that they're there, but like it would be great to see them, but life is busy and all of this stuff and they have their own reasons. But here I am sitting still and people want to come and spend time with me. And then when they do, I hear back from them every time like, wow, that was so great. We love you so much. Can we come again? Can we spend more time together? Yeah. It's, it's just been, it's been amazing. Um, I, I, my, both of my aunts have come to visit. Um, I heard from a friend that I hadn't, she just kind of had to disappear from life and the world. One of those situations where, you know, we were in our friend group when I lived back in Iowa. The last time I saw her was the fall of 2015, and I didn't hear from her. No one heard from her um, until I heard from her about two, three months ago. And she just kind of reconnected out of nowhere. And it's like, wow, you know, if, if these people can do this, then surely – it's a, it's a birds before land type of thing. And, you know, Lauren, can I be in your life? Lauren, I miss you. Lauren, I want to see you. Lauren, can I come and visit you? Yes. And I'm just, I, I'm not doing anything except loving myself and then putting that love back out into the world as much as I can. Yeah. And I, I just keep seeing that same story. Um, one day I was, 
I don't remember. It might have been a Saturday morning, and so I was just relaxing. I didn't have to work that day. And the phone rang, and it was an ex-boyfriend. It wasn't the ex, but it was I'm, – I'm just like, wow, I haven't heard from him in well over a year now. And the phone is just ringing, you know, and it's like I haven't been doing anything special. Um, you know, I just live my life. I'm not trying, like, the Facebook flipping through the news feed. And yeah. if it's that easy for that person, then it will be just as easy yeah. for the specific person um, to do that as well. Yeah, that's like a good birds before land X is popping up as always. It seems to happen a lot when people do their self-love. I hear it again and again. Yeah. I was coaching people in the Q&A where people, they, they start doing their self-love really earnestly and really start giving love. And then the exes pop up or old friendships that have broken down pop up or yes. a relative they had an issue with pops up. And it's like it dissolves and dismantles a lot of discord. Yes. Yeah. And it just... Like it, it feels flowing and it's like, it's a, it's always surprising. Like a, it feels like a little bit of a surprise and then it's like, well, no, it's not because <laughs> you know, this is going to happen. Yeah. Like I just keep telling myself, like I'm writing the greatest love story right now. And I cannot wait to share that love story with the whole rest of the world. And you know, people are, this won't be the last career that I'm in either. I'm, I'm going to have a lot of fun in real estate and help a lot of people and make a lot of money. Yeah. But I would eventually like to go back into coaching and, you know, just help other people in that way. And the story that I keep hearing that's out there is like, Lauren, you should write a book. You should, <laughs> you know, and it's like, okay, I'm putting it on my list. Yep. I will definitely. What kind of coaching did you do? Because we didn't talk about that. Um, it was basically sales coaching. Um, in my role in the insurance company, I would help brand new people who had been, you know, just employees somewhere, kind of similar to your story. Like, how do you go from coming to, pl to a place, being told what to do, clocking in, yeah. you know, you can go to the bathroom now, you can eat lunch now, you can make this much money, <laughs> you're, only, you're, you're being paid for your time and not your, the job that you, I helped people like that go from that lifestyle to becoming their own boss, becoming six figure earners, yeah. you know, and that's part of the legacy that I've left is that those people still have those skills and know how to do that, you know? So yeah. I probably don't want to be so specific as sales coaching anymore, although that's a possibility once I get some, some traction and experience here in the real estate world. Yeah. Um, I would like to stay more in the self empowerment field, but it's all kind of the same. So yeah. 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 yeah, I remember we talked about that, but I thought I couldn't remember how, what, you know, what kind of coaching you did specifically, because it's almost a bit like business sales coaching, isn't it? In a, in yes. A, yeah. But yeah, That's you have to have the stuff underneath, no matter what kind of end result you want, whether it's in business or whether it's in a relationship with a specific person, whether it's whatever it is. Mm -hmm. always the underlying thing has to be your self-love has to be good for it to flourish and and having the right motivation and mindset and the energy behind it just yeah. like I mean and I this is what I used to tell myself I thought why am I so good at you know at sales but I'm so terrible at relationships like I heard myself say that in the past and now I know you know your words are so powerful. The stories that we tell ourselves are so powerful. Like if you, it didn't make sense to me at the time to just change the script or change it enough to where your brain has an okay time believing it. And then it will follow. I thought you had to be good at it first and then you could say stuff, but it's really the opposite of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like that Wayne Dyer book. It's not, you have to, um, see it to believe it it's you got to believe it to see it that's where that yes. title, it's exactly that yes it's yes. so the opposite of what we've been trained to do yep it's and and people right. fight against that what's that just like people fight against it just yeah. like I, I discovered veronica and she was talking about the law of attraction and i thought that's crazy that's dumb i'm not doing that <laughs> How can you just sit still and think about stuff and then it happens? No, that's the first part. And then your life changes in a way. 
I tell people this at least once a week. You live in the reality that you create for yourself. And that means it, it all starts in your mind. It's your beliefs. You know, a belief is just a thought that you think over and over. Yep. And your beliefs shape your emotions. Your emotions cause you to act. Yep. Your actions repeated over time, that's your behavior. Yep. And then you get that world that your behavior makes you have. Yep. Um, so, you know, my brother and I had that conversation once because we were, we, we both love dogs. He has four dogs. I have four dogs. Um, and he's saying like, Lauren, it's just about behavior modification. I'm like, that really feels kind of like it's at the end of the conveyor belt. You know, if we're, if we're this big machine that's spitting out, you know, and it, the machine puts together the parts and it's all wrapped up in a nice little box, why would you just change the wrapping on the box? You need to fix the machine that makes it happen, yeah. and then it's going to come out differently. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. But that you know, my you know, people in my family have said stuff like that to me too, and I think I have stopped taking advice from you a long time ago. <laughs> I just, I just go, yeah, yeah, okay. And then off I go going, nah. That's another great point to make. There are so many people, and I used to be like this, and I'm still sometimes like this, where I feel like I need that reassurance from someone else or, yeah, um, you know, I mean, I before I made any type of decision, I would go through this panel of people like, talk through it. Yes and no. Should I? Shouldn't I? What do I feel like? I don't know. You know, and I would just get all this other stuff. Like yeah. this has probably been the most freeing and the best takeaway from all of this has been, you know, I am my own counsel now. I, yes, I'm, I'm listening. I'm learning. I'm careful what I let filter in and out. But just like you said, it's, it's amazing to see that like, I know I can stand on my own two feet now. I don't need someone else telling me yes or no, or you should, you shouldn't. And yeah, you, know, you can find, I, I mean, I, again, I think coaching is wonderful and you have so helped me with that. Um, and, and thank you. That's, I think we need to find someone who's just a little bit ahead of us on our path, but sometimes that's not your best friend. Sometimes that's not your mom or your dad or any other trusted relative. No. So you have to really kind of get okay with, with knowing that you can do it and, yeah. you know, careful of what you let filter in. Absolutely. I think sometimes the worst advice is free from well-meaning people. Yeah. In your yeah. life, you know, I just hear so many people get advice and I just think, oh. You know, yes. because they don't understand law of attraction. They don't understand conscious creation. They don't understand everyone's you pushed out. They don't understand living in the end. And they're giving you advice from their bad experiences. Right. And you think. Yeah, it, uh, yeah exactly. I mean, be careful. Like, look, look at that piece of advice that you're trying to take from that person. Are they living that type of life or yeah. not? Like. Yeah. You know, they're only going to be able to give you advice from where you're standing at that, you know, from where they're standing at that point. So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That dog. I love him. He can hear that the neighbor is outside moving. And so he's like, I'm making my YouTube debut. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> needing a bit of attention. Yeah, he's, he's telling me, um, Mom, I hear that someone is outside making a lot of noise, so I'm going to make even more noise to make sure that we scare him away. Yeah, fair enough. So it's not um, different than people, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Give me yeah. some attention. <laughs> really, Shane? Um, with the, I would love to tell you my bulldog story because... Yeah. No one gets it. I like her entire life was just a total miracle. And yeah. he doesn't stop barking. I'm gonna go downstairs and shush him and then come right back. Um, you want to take I can pause this. You want me to yeah, pause? Let's, let's, I'll, I'll just pause it. Come back when you're ready. Make sure that everything is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, animals have a need to be, they're loyal and they like to be around what's going on. Oh, and this breed specifically, their entire um, purpose is to be a protector. So, 
He knows what's up. Beautiful dog. He really is. He's just. Let us see him again. Okay. Oh. Can, you see? Can you see his eyes? There he is. Oh, look how beautiful. He looks like a grandfather. He's just, he kind of is an old soul. He's, um, this one was, um, he was abused and neglected somewhere here in Nashville. He was confiscated by the, uh, you know, the animal control. There were charges pressed against his owner. And then he had to live at the shelter for seven months because the owner was um, taking the city to court to get his property back. Um, anyway, he came in to rescue then. And I saw one picture of him on Instagram and I thought, that is my dog. I love him. Like, no matter what state he's in, yeah. there he is. So, he's a little bit, <laughs> he's just looking at me like with those big eyes. He has the most expressive face and he just, yeah. Beautiful. He is. He's got a very deep bark. Sounds like an old, an old man's, that real sort of grandfather. I'm so thankful for them because I do have an alarm system on the house just in case, but I don't really think that anybody in their right mind is going to bother me with these big dogs around me. So you got four. Um, yes, I, I, four is like the number right now. I have Harper, who's another great Pyrenees. She's 13 years old, um, but she can bark a lot too. I have Bob, who's my foster. and He's like a little... We call him the Tennessee Brown Hound because he's just a brown hound mix. <laughs> and he's really sweet and he loves food. And um, right now, since Frenchie left, I have Rosie. And she has some very serious chemical burns on her back. And when she's able to be adopted, I think I will probably manifest a visit from my aunt and uncle who live in Washington state, which is across the country on the West coast. Yeah. I haven't seen them since 2004 and they're pretty sure they want to adopt her. So they're going to fly all the way here to Nashville, get the dog and take her on a road trip back to Washington state. So wow. it, it's just been like, you know, when you put the love out there, like yeah. it come to you. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Wonderful. So you wanted, before we stopped, you wanted to talk about a particular. Oh, that, my bulldog. Yes. Yeah. So um, I brought a picture. I brought a couple of pictures of her. She, this is Frenchie. And this bulldog is so awesome because I literally spoke her into existence. And if you couldn't tell, we're basically like separated at birth. <laughs> this is me in a really bad mood because I was hangry and had been drinking and was sunburnt in Mexico. And this is Frenchie wearing the same outfit several years later. So no one understands the story except for law of attraction people. But it starts with my specific person and I. We used yeah. to lay in bed. He loves bulldogs. He loves bulldogs. But we won't just go and buy a dog because we don't believe in that. You know, it's, it's about saving a life. It's about rescuing. And yeah. he, we would flip through Instagram pictures of bulldogs and um, whether they were English bulldogs or French bulldogs. Um, you know, his cousin has a French bulldog. And I said to him, someday when we get married, I want to have a Frenchie and we will name her Frenchie. He said, okay, Lauren. <laughs> and I said, but I really like English Bulldogs better. And he said, well, then just, we'll just get an English Bulldog and we'll name her Frenchie. And I said, okay. <laughs> and as silly as that is, you know, like, what, why would anybody name an English Bulldog Frenchie? But that was the story. That's how it all started. That was in 2016. In August of 2017, Hurricane Irma hit. And it came to Florida, and whoever had Frenchie and her sister um, dumped them at the shelter in the overnight box. They were just like, oh, hurricane's coming. These dogs are trash. And they had been abused before then. You know, they were used to breed, 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 and overbreed and all of that. And just you could tell that they didn't have good lives. They were old. And somebody literally was like, well, just take these two little perfect 
grumpy lives and we'll dump them at the shelter and they'll be someone else's problem. Yeah. And then Big Fluffy, the, the rescue organization that I work with, they had heard about that. And long story short, the girls got dumped on a Tuesday night. Yeah. They were all, the whole shelter, 15 dogs and a cat were scheduled to die on Wednesday night because the city officials or whoever was in charge knew that the hurricane was going to hit. And the solution wasn't to call and ask anyone for help. It was just kill them all. Yeah. And um, Big Fluffy had heard about this and basically said, not on our watch. And so they went to the shelter. They loaded up all 15 dogs and cat and drove them back to Nashville, Tennessee. And I had heard about this because of Facebook and you know, I was already volunteering with the organization and um, I thought, well, I'll go help them triage and work with them. Sure enough, here's these two little bulldogs. You know, they were so grumpy. They had just been through like a 14 hour van ride. They were stuck in the same kennel because there wasn't enough room for everyone at the end. And I just fell in love. I thought I need to take one of these guys home. And so I picked Cha-Cha and her name was Cha-Cha, the whole, everybody in the van that day got named after the characters from the movie Grease. Yes. And um, I thought, well, I better take that one because she was not the instigator in this little dog fight thing that happened. Yes. So Frenchie goes back to the live at the kennel. Um, uh, you know, she was safe there and, and I took Cha-Cha home. And Cha-Cha stayed with me for 21 days until she passed away suddenly, you know, again. They were old. They didn't do well. Um, you know, I don't know what it was that got her, what, a blood clot maybe, or um, long story short, she passed away in the living room traumatically, and I did everything I could, but she wasn't staying here. Yeah. And I thought to myself after she died, okay, like, take a breath, get your bearings, whatever, but let's go ahead and, and get another one out of the kennel. I want to keep helping. I, I love fostering. I love giving them a home. It helps them get adopted faster and it's just a better environment. Yeah. And so I called the coordinator and I said, is she, is she still down there? Meaning the other bulldog. She said, yeah, go and get her whenever you want. And so I did, I drove, it's about 20 minutes from here. And I put Frenchie in the car, you know, she's looking at me. Bulldogs kind of stand like linebackers. They, yeah. they stick their shoulders out and they're, they've got this <laughs> underbite. You know, she looks at me like, I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know you, so let's just get along. Yeah. And I had this aha moment like, oh my gosh. I, all I did was say I wanted an English bulldog and we will name her Frenchie. Yeah. And here she is, an English bulldog. She came from three states away. She was supposed to be dead at least twice. You know, it took a hurricane and her sister dying because I didn't even choose her. And here she is in my living room with really not a whole lot of effort from me at all. And I didn't even name her. So like, it just is incredible how like, okay, if something that crazy and silly and full of so much love, because really, I mean, that dog changed my life. They both did. Um, if that can happen, then why do I ever even doubt that? anything from my wildest imagination is not going to show up in exactly the right time yeah. with me having to do not very much to make it so. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that story. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's nice to, I think when you get so obsessed with, you know, a job or money or a specific person or an ex or this or that, to have those things like nature, animals, mm -hmm. babies, those things pull you so out of yourself and remind you that there's so much more to life than your oh. little tiny thing that you're focused on that's driving you nuts. Yes. It really is such an amazing thing. And it brings you, I mean, I hear when you talk about it, there's a lot of love there. And that comes out naturally. You're not trying to force it out. You're not trying to make it happen. You just feel love for dogs. And yes, that love leaks into everything else. It's such yes. a great thing. And they give to you because you love them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm the only person in her whole experience that she ever loved back. I mean, I, I sort of doubt that anybody loved her before because I can guess from her lifestyle. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. just dump somebody at the shelter that you love. Um, exactly. But I, I, I just feel so grateful, so lucky, so appreciative that I have these opportunities. Like you said, you know it's so important to get outside of yourself and your own little laser focus. Like there's more to life than just the specific person. There's more to life than any other little, you know, manifestation that you're working on. And, you know, to have somebody teach you that and they don't even have words, like it's just, it's incredible to, to be a part of that. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we've come nearly to the end. Do you want to say anything just to finalize anything you want to say? I think that if, um, if I could offer some tips and just reinforce what you tell people, it would be really, really, really focus on the self love. I mean, if, if you're not waking up every morning and just feeling like, man, I have got this handle, like, <laughs> you know that there's something missing. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that every day is perfect because we're humans, like you say. Um, yeah. You know, there's going to be moments here and there. But if you cannot figure out how to get yourself back out of it, then you have work to do in the self-love department. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of what I did, you said focus – like 75% on yourself and 25% on the specific person. Like I'll do self-love meditations two, three, four times a day. You know, the affirmations really, really help too. Like if I feel my mind starting to wander off on the wrong channel, yeah. I will change the channel and just go, I love myself. I love myself or any other affirmation that's positive. Yeah. Um, a couple of books that I've read that are really good. Definitely um, the Kamal Ravikant, the um, love yourself like your life depends on it. I mean, really, like, we all listen to these videos and we think, like, yeah, I'll get around to that. Like, it's just so much easier to turn on a YouTube. Yeah. But you can get Kamal's book on audio, and I probably have listened to that a dozen times already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another great one is You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Yeah. That's a really great book. Um, and something else that has helped me a lot uh, to, you know, to shortcut some of um, what I learned from the XBAC program. Yeah. If, you can, if I could shortcut that and put it into one book that you should read, it would be um, um, uh, Nonviolent Communication. And it's, it's got a funny title, but it is really, really a great book. Um, uh, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg was the psychologist that wrote that. And it's not traditional psychology. He was really shunned by a lot of traditional psychologists because the way that he teaches us to communicate is to try to understand the emotions behind it. So it really kind of all ties in. Those, those three things have been very helpful to me. Okay. Um, reading a lot of that and then um, just trying to get into, um, I listen to a lot of you. I listen to a lot of um, Abraham, um, Neville when I can. It's yeah. just, you really do, if you want to see the changes, if you want to start feeling good again, like do put the work in. Yeah. I ask people that sometimes. Well, how much are you listening to every day? Or how, what are you actively doing yeah. to help yourself? I mean, you have to make a concerted effort. Um, and and it, it all starts with the self-love and feeling better. Um, about that. So that would be my, mm. my little piece of advice for people who yeah. want to feel better. Mm. I will put the links to all the things you mentioned down in the description of this YouTube so people can find that. Awesome. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank that you, Anya. Brilliant. It's God, the hour goes so quick when it's a good, good interview and a good subject, isn't it? Just like yeah. the whole hour's gone. Yeah. So we're going to say goodbye and stay on the line for a minute and then we can have a chat for a second. Sounds good. Thank Bye. You. Thank you.